These are posters from the 1968 Olympic Games, which were held in Mexico City. And in 1968, of course, using posters to advertise the games was already something that was in use, but these games are really recognized as being a height of artistic achievement within the history of the Olympics, and also being a real turning point for how the visual identity of the um, Olympic programs could be imagined for future games. One of the earliest posters in the exhibition which is down here to my left. Um, it incorporates some of the key things that you would expect to see in one of these posters. You have, at the top, have the five Olympic rings, and at the bottom, it clearly states 1968 Mexico, so you know where you are and when you are there for the games. In the center of the image, we see the Aztec calendar stone, or sunstone, which is a large monumental sculpture, which is now in the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City. And it also gives the idea of the long cultural history that is present in Mexico. And that was something that the Olympic Organizing Committee and the Design Committee really wanted to draw on. At the same time, they also wanted to highlight Mexico as being um, an international place and contemporary. And so there was a large team of designers working within the Department of Publications and Urban Design which was led by an architect named Pedro Ramirez Vasquez, and another architect named Eduardo Terrazas, who was the head of urban design, and then a graphic designer from New York named Lance Wyman came on to work with a lot of the graphics. And Wyman came up with the idea, um, working within this team, which seems simple at first, but he created the logo that you see behind me. And he started using his compass, and he drew first the five Olympic rings. From that, he incorporated 68 for 1968, and from there he extended it on to include Mexico. Then, he continued to um, create a system of radiating lines that create this really visually striking optical work, which was related um, very much to the moment of the 60s and some of the op art that we saw at that time, where artists were working with geometric designs and really strong contrasts, such as between the black and white behind me, to create these really um, visually hypnotic works that seemed like they were moving. At the same time, um, it was related to indigenous traditions in Mexico, such as yarn paintings by the Huichol people, where um, they would take a board with a natural glue, such as wax or tree resin, and draw with yarn, coiling the yarn to create radiating lines in a similar way. So at the same time, we have these traditions of Mexican art, as well as sort of pulls to a larger artistic moment. The graphic was then incorporated into a font, which you can see in many of the posters around me. It was used throughout the city to visually map spaces. There were similar rings, like you see behind me, painted on the ground around the Olympic stadiums. It appeared on dresses that were totally um, chic 60s mod dresses that hostess for, hostesses for the Olympic Games would wear. And you could find it on all sorts of tickets, programs, souvenirs. And of course, the, um, one of the most important souvenirs of the Games are these posters. I believe there are, I read there are 159 poster designs. And this is a sample of some of the ones that you can see. And for example, we have a whole wall here of posters that were created for sporting events. And a lot of times the posters were related to the programs that were being passed out. And you can see in these posters some of the bright colors that were being used, these black and white images that show athletic prowess for various Olympic events. There's volleyball, field hockey, various gymnastic events. And on the mall, you see the Mexico 68 logo. In addition to sporting events, there was also a cultural program of exhibitions and performances that started in the nine to 10 months leading up to the games, and posters were created for those events as well. And there are some examples also in the exhibition of these types of posters. And um, while you can see a very individual style and the images are advertising the events that they correspond to, such as a Japanese film series or a play about Medusa, you can also again see the Mexico 68 font and logo as well as a system of icons that were being used to help people 
easily identify where they were trying to go, what they wanted to see, as again a way of communicating with people um, who might have spoken a variety of languages, all coming to Mexico City for the first time, and to help them find their way around the city. And that system of using icons was then developed further and in, actually into the Mexico City subway system, which was being worked on at the same time and opened shortly after the Olympic Games. So you can really start to see this long-lasting effect of the visual identity and the graphic identity that was created specifically for the Mexico 1968 Games. And today, um, once you see um, an image or a font like the one behind me, you might immediately call to mind this time and this moment. Now, one of the most immediate uh, influences that this design program had was one that the Mexican Olympic Committee um, probably could not have anticipated. But in 1968, it was a time of um, violence and unrest with protests around the world, and Mexico was certainly no exception. And throughout the year, as the Olympics got closer, um, protesters and especially university students were taking to the streets to protest the Mexican government. And the government had promoted the games as games of peace, and so they were trying to stop and quell these protests, but the tensions all came to a head on October 2nd, which was just 10 days before the opening ceremonies for the Olympics, when the um, police and government opened fire on a large um, peaceful but protest gathering. And the, which is now known as the Tlatelolco Massacre. And the government um, tried to quickly cover it up, but news of this event did reach the Olympic Games. And one of the ways that the student protesters um, tried to voice their opinions was by using the visual language that had been created through these posters in their own protest posters. So you might see images that incorporate the font or the 68 with the radiating lines and the Olympic rings then superimposed instead over athletes but over military figures. So just the use of the protesters of this visual material as a way to voice their own concern against the government really does attest to the effectiveness of the logo itself and how it could be visually recognizable as representing um, this larger event. And this year, 2018, it's the 50th anniversary, not only of the Olympic Games, but of these protests. And there have been art exhibitions around the world from San Francisco to New York, Mexico City, and Madrid that have featured both the official Olympic posters and these unofficial protest posters and of course here at the LA84 Foundation as well. And that just gives you a real sense of the lasting importance and effectiveness of the visual imagery of the Mexico 1968 Olympic Games.